Good morning. Um, as Dr. Kasamata said, my name is Aparesh Patel. I'm founder and CEO of PayRange. Uh, but before I got into PayRange, I was actually an operator for many years, about 20 years. So uh, I've kind of been on both sides of the table, on the technology side as well as on the operator side. What I'm going to be talking about today is a little bit about artificial intelligence. Uh, the session, the keynote session you attended yesterday had uh, touched on this a little bit. And actually, I see this AI word popping up a lot these days. And you might be wondering, what is this? And what does this actually mean? And what does it have to do with the vending, in, uh, vending or micro market industry? And so I'm going to try to answer some of these questions for you. But first of all, I just wanted to do a quick survey. Dr. Casamana did a little survey, but I just want to see how many of you actually use artificial intelligence today? Yeah, kind of what I was expecting. Not a whole lot of you. Uh, but you'd be surprised um, how much of you actually, how many of you are actually using artificial intelligence, and we're going to actually come to that in a second. But what was really interesting to me was as I was researching for this article, I mean for this presentation, I was on my computer at home and doing searches on artificial intelligence and all that kind of stuff. And sometime later, a couple hours later, um, I pulled out my iPad, opened up my Wall Street Journal app, and I kid you not, the very first screen that opened up had six articles on artificial intelligence. And um, I don't know if that was coincidence or not, but it was really interesting how I was searching for something on my desktop computer at home. I launched my iPad, and the very thing I'm looking at shows up there. So think about how stuff like that happens, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more on that. But one of the articles that I found stated that 90% of global CIOs plan to have AI deployed in their companies in some way in the next three years. So just think about how fast things are moving. 90% of global CIOs will have some form of AI in their company in the next three years. So as the vending industry, we've always kind of been lagging behind a lot of the technologies that have come uh, in, in the general marketplace. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how to connect machines, try to get cashless payment on machines, and now we've got this whole AI thing coming up here really quickly as well. What my goal for this presentation is kind of really simple. First of all, just try to give you a little practical understanding of what artificial intelligence actually is. Uh, where it's used today, so you can kind of connect with it and understand, this is not a technical presentation by any stretch of the imagination. It's to make sure you understand a little bit more of what's going on here with the word AI. And then how AI will actually improve unintended retail. So I'll give a few examples of that. And then at the very end of this, try to address the question of why you should even care about this. Like, why, of all things, should you care about AI? Why does that even make a difference to you? So first of all, what is artificial intelligence? Well, it really fundamentally kind of boils down to something very easy to understand, but it's a very complex topic. In a nutshell, it's basically a machine's ability to learn and then take some action based on that. And what do I mean by that? It's computers traditionally have always been programmed to do a certain thing. Like, let's take a very simple example, like your pocket calculator. Three plus three equals six. Three times three equals nine. No matter how many times you type that in, it will always give you the exact same answer. Because it is programmed that when you punch in three plus three, it equals six. And by definition, it will always result in six. And that is how most computers typically work, is they're programmed to do a certain thing. They take some input and it results in some output. What artificial intelligence does is a little bit different. It takes a whole bunch of data and comes up with a different answer based on what's actually happening right now, based on that data. And so what it does is it, it's learning. It's taking more data, will make it better, and get it, uh, different things. And I'll show you a couple quick examples of this, but you probably, if you're an operator, know what this is. This is a Dixie Narco 5000 soda machine. And as a consumer, I've seen this many times. As an operator, I've seen this many times. It's a bottle jam in selection A1. Um, so in a very simple example, the first time the user pushed A1, the bottle dropped. 
The second time the abuser pushed A1, it got jammed up. The third time somebody pushed A1, if you were stupid enough to push it, what would happen? Would it try to dispense again? No. Because it's going to say make another selection. And why did it do that? Because there's a drop sensor that was watching for the second bend. The second time the bottle did not drop, it said, wait a second, I didn't dispense, so something must be wrong with this. And then it disabled that selection. And when does it get re-enabled again? When the service door is open, it assumes that the person now has come to fix the machine and it resets. So three plus three equals six, but in this case, A1 does not always equal A1. A1 equals A1 until something happened, which was a little piece of data, which then changed the output. Now this is a very, very elementary example of machine learning, basically. But this is basically what, how, I'll give you a simple example from an operator standpoint, something that you have been seeing as an operator for many years, but you probably didn't realize that it was basically some elementary version of machine learning. The same thing didn't result in the same output. Now, of course, there's a lot more examples here and there's a lot more complexity here, but AI is everywhere. AI is affecting every single thing you do today uh, on the mobile phone for the most part. For example, navigation. Navigation, when you go from point A to point B, will it always route you exactly the same way? No, it takes into consideration things like traffic. And there are other factors that will affect it. If there's an accident, it reroutes you. It, those are things where it is not always giving you the same thing. So three plus three doesn't always equal six. In this case, point A to point B is not exactly the same route. And how does it get better? The more data that comes into it, the more data that comes about the different roads and the traffic and uh, accidents and weather conditions and all other things that can come into it results in a better model and a better route for you. How about uh, email? Everybody in this room uses email. Did you know you were using AI as you were using email? You probably didn't realize it, but your spam filter, every time you mark something as junk, it's learning a little bit more about what is junk. And the next time it sees something like that, it automatically moves it without it coming into your inbox. So again, mail coming in doesn't automatically make it into your inbox because sometimes it has now learned that if it looks like this or if it's like this, I'm gonna move it into my junk folder. And the more data you give it, the more, move, the more email you move into the junk folder, the more smarter it becomes, and then it's able to do things without you being as involved. That's another example. How about Netflix? When you first sign into Netflix, it has no idea what kind of movies you like and it's not really recommending uh, anything other than maybe top movies and things like that. The more you watch on it, the more it starts getting uh, uh, to understanding what you actually like and it starts recommending <coughs> movies that you might be liking. Amazon, same thing. So the point being is all of these apps and services you use today have actually integrated machine learning components, artificial intelligence components into it to provide you as a consumer, a better experience. This is the key word, experience. What artificial intelligence ultimately is trying to do is improve the consumer experience. And we, as vending operators, are providing a service to consumers, and those consumers expect better and better services. So how do we do that? Well, in unintended retail, if you take the value chain, the different things we do to deliver the services to the consumer, you'll realize that there are a lot of different places where artificial intelligence can come into play. For example, in inventory management, do you always have to stock everything up to 192 cases of coke or whatever, and if weather and other things impact it? Today, usually there's a warehouse manager, or somebody, maybe it's you, somebody's automatically I shouldn't say automatic, someone is manually adjusting the par levels based on things that are happening. As artificial intelligence comes into here, these things could be managed automatically. So as demand increases or decreases, or other things, other data comes in, things like about weather, 
promotions and stuff. It can automatically adjust inventory management. How about product mix? What actually goes into a machine? The interesting thing here is we, in the last five years, have actually taken a backward step. What do I mean by that? Prior to pre-kitting and all of that stuff, the route driver was determining what went into a machine. Well, in that case, maybe the route driver wasn't the best route driver, but he knew this location was uh, a school or this was a hotel and this was a kid's location and they would adjust the product mix somewhat based on their own personal preferences or intuition or knowledge of what should go into that machine. When we started shifting towards pre-kitting, we kind of just said everything kind of gets the same or many machines get the same thing and there was less customization there. Now we can take, AI can take this the next step further and actually start recommending, just like Amazon recommends what you should be seeing online when you come, the machine product mix could get smarter the more data that is coming in. And I can go through all of this, there's a lot of examples here, uh, e even all the way down to consumer support. Consumer support today largely is the customer calling and talking to a human. Uh, imagine it being able to talk to a, uh, a chatbot. A chatbot is basically like text messaging to Alexa. Basically, you, you're text messaging this thing, the other side is actually a computer responding back to you, and it can take care of probably 80% of the basic request, like uh, support calls of, hey, my machine needs filling, or my machine is not working, and all of that kind of stuff. So a lot of that stuff in the coming years is gonna get automated. All of this stuff will do kind of two big things. One is to improve the consumer experience. But the second, and this is also interesting, is not a, in addition to improving the consumer experience, and many times it will reduce your operating costs because it is a lot cheaper to have a chatbot respond to a support call than a human. And, and it will allow you to become much more efficient in your operating business. Um, promotion, scheduling, predictive maintenance, all of these other areas are places where AI can actually play into it. Alexa, Let me give you an example. Of Twix bars are available. Sorry, your machine is out of Twix bars at this moment. When is it scheduled for service? Your machine is scheduled to be restocked tomorrow morning. Is there something available that I like? Yes, based on your purchase history, you might enjoy Snickers or Kit Kat which are available. So, so the point of this... Alexa. Ask PayRange to request Baby Ruth. Thank you. I'll request Baby Ruth to be filled tomorrow morning. The point of this is that the more data that comes in, the smarter the systems become at responding to it. And if you think about your own support calls that come in, there's probably like a dozen of them that account for like 80% of the support calls. It's something that can easily be automated. Because even though people may be asking in a different way, they're basically asking the same thing. This doesn't exist today, but this is something that we think is coming in the very near future, where you could just use an Alexa, Siri, or a chatbot to deal with uh, automation and uh, uh, scheduling support and all of that. The consumers are already using this. The consumers are already using this uh, for every other thing that they're doing around the home or around their workplace. And so it's not like we're gonna to need to teach the consumers entirely new things. It's leveraging the knowledge they already have. They also are using mobile for a lot of different things. And the question is, is how do we take mobile and leverage that experience into unintended retail as well? The last one I wanted to kind of just wrap up is what do you actually need to do today? Uh, so why should you care today? Well, the way I kind of put this is, think about this like your retirement plan. Uh, it, when you try to save up for retirement, uh, and if you start at age 60, it kind of becomes too late uh, to kind of get to any kind of material savings unless you have a ton of money to put into it. Well, data is kind of like the new currency. The sooner you start collecting data, the better off you're going to be. Uh, and the better off you're going to be because what's happening is you're getting more data to learn. You may be able to catch up later, but it's going to take a lot more time and a lot more money to be able to do it. So what you need to do today is just try to work 
with partners that can help you start collecting the data. You don't necessarily need to know how to use the data yet, just like you don't know what you're gonna be doing for retirement later. You don't need to know how you're gonna use it, but you need to start collecting that data so you understand your consumers, you understand what's happening at your machines, and you understand how you're gonna be able to leverage that to improve your sales and also improve the experience. The last one I'm gonna leave you with is that if you come back and think about the very first question I asked you, how many of you are using AI? Think about it now with a new lens and think about how many of you will actually not only are using AI, but how many of you actually will use AI today? Show of hands if you're gonna actually be using AI sometime today now. That's really fascinating because you don't know a whole lot about AI, but you're using it. And the beauty of AI is that it can simplify things for the consumer and yet provide a lot of power at the same time. Thank you. Thank you.